Have you ever applied for a job but were quickly passed over for the position even though you're qualified for it? Well, my guest today, Sue Schlum, a recruiter and career coach, will teach you how to get your next job. Sue has recruited for companies like PepsiCo, Wrigley, 7th Generation, and many others. Her recruiting work keeps her on the cutting edge of companies' technology and processes to recruit, screen, interview, and hire candidates. This expertise forms the basis of her career coaching business. In today's episode, Sue will teach you how to create the targeted resume to help you stand out to your next hiring manager. Well, Welcome to Lifeology. Thank you. I am excited about this. It's so funny. You and I met randomly, which I always love those quote random coincidences. Um, at a brunch, we have a, a couple of mutual friends, and yes. you were you were there. I was there. It was great talking to you, and all of a sudden we have this great conversation. And here you are today on my show. I know so many people listening are like, "Oh my gosh, I have applied for so many jobs, and I have not gotten them." Walk me through. I guess your struggle when you first started out, because you have so many different degrees, you had to do the same thing and you probably didn't get the same jobs that you were looking for that you get today because of your resume writing. Tell us your experience when what, what happened with you. Well, I graduated from college and I wasn't sure what I was even qualified to do. I had a resume that was a very traditional resume and I took a couple of temp jobs until I, I landed a job in financial services. I realized in that first job that I didn't know much about work and about careers. <laughs> so I went back to school and I went and I got my MBA at the University of Michigan. And Michigan wow. made things a lot easier because they do a lot of training on how to search for a job, job search strategy, et cetera. And over the years, I have realized as a recruiter that so many of the resumes of the people that apply for jobs are simply disconnected. They don't make sense mm. why yeah. that person is applying for that job. And more and more you hear about targeted resumes and that's why my business is called The Targeted Resume yeah. because it's probably the single most important tool you have to get the interview to get the job you want. Mm -hmm. Now, there are many people, in fact, I know quite a few people who have been in their field for many years, but also the same position mm -hmm. for a really long time. And so wanting right. to transition to another job, it's there's a difference between the quote old school resumes of something mm -hmm. I did when I was writing resumes to right. now. And so in that, I think a lot of us just don't realize, you know, obviously very competent people, but just don't really realize how to write the new resume. When I was talking to you, um, I think it was at brunch, when I was talking to you, I remember my first resume, like my professional resume, not for, you know, for my mm -hmm. career. I had like a little graphic at the really top of like a um, the big old it was a Microsoft Word where there was a look like a, a psychologist was sitting down with and the person's the person's laying oh, on the yeah. couch and so I was like oh, I want that little graphic there and then I had all these different colors and then I was gonna put an image on there but I was, of myself I was like that's probably a little bit much but I remember that and it seemed right for me at the time and now I look back on that as a hiring manager when I used to hire people. <laughs> I would not have hired me <laughs> for something as silly as that. <laughs> but what is the difference now between years ago versus now and then we'll get into i, th I think you even have some five steps yes. to talk about but the difference between before and now what's what worked before and what works now so the resume you had in college or maybe even that a resume writer wrote for you or that you pulled mm -hmm. a template off of off of uh, the internet the problem is it's more of an autobiography where it just talks uh -huh. about the things you've done but it's not connected yeah, at all to what the job is looking for, what the job description says. So a targeted mm -hmm. resume, actually you take the job description on one side and your resume on the other side, you highlight those key skills and experiences that they're looking for from the job description. And you make sure those things are front and center on your resume because recruiters, believe it or not, only look at yeah. your resume for five to seven seconds. And they don't read cover letters at this point. So your resume really has to reflect your direct specific experience vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the job you're applying for. Which that sounds like it takes a lot of work because if I am trying to apply for, <laughs> I'm looking for a job, I'm like, oh my God, I need something right now. So to apply for a job, it's, it's quote easier to just use a standard resume and go ahead right. and write all that, you know, one, and then send it off to 20 people, you know, for example. Right. So it's obviously going to take a lot more work for me to tailor my resume for every single one of them. I remember I was applying for some government positions, um, actually through the the quote local local county government, like through actually through Washington D.C. and mm -hmm. through Fairfax County when I used to live in Virginia. And those are very specific, and so you have to write so many supplemental questions with that. And those resumes and all that 
it, it, it took at least an hour and a half. And I was like, oh my God, this is right. just exhausting. And that's probably a little bit more extreme because I'm sure a lot of people don't have to do the, the government background aspects of it. But what would you say, how much time would you actually say a, a normal, to use your version, which obviously is very successful, how long yeah. do you think it would really take to create a resume that's targeted specifically for a position? It takes a long time the first few times. So I would okay. allocate an hour, an hour and a half for the first one or two, but it gets easier because now you have these templates and you can kind of pick and choose and update the templates for the job you're applying for. Ah, interesting. Oh, okay. So, okay. So when you say templates though, is that like the, the career? So if I was to do, so in my field, uh, if I'm doing a private practice uh, resume, or versus a teaching resume, because I used to teach at university, um, mm -hmm. and then doing a, a regional director position, which is what I used to do. So, I mean, there's lots of things, just like everybody, we've had many jobs, but that right. I would have a tailored position, like, okay, for this is my resume, this is my, this is my teaching one, this is my um, directorial aspect of it. And then from there, I would then take the key terms and just flip those in or put those in. Exactly. Instead. So for example, okay. you may be great at digital marketing, but if the job description says it requires Google Analytics and you don't say anywhere on your resume, uh, Google Analytics true. certified, the recruiter is not going to connect the dots and assume that you know Google Analytics. Interesting. Before we jump into the five steps, I wanted to go back because you said the, the first one was an autobiographical. Autobiogra autobi your typical traditional resume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have that and then you have, there's other ones that are, there's different versions of that. Which one is the most effective? Or actually walk us through the different versions and which one do you think is most effective? There are reverse chronological resumes, which are the most traditional, where you start with your education or your experience and mm -hmm. work backwards. Yeah, and then there are there are other resumes that more are skill-based, where they list a skill like leadership or financial planning, and then they list all of the experience you have. Recruiters by far prefer the chronological reverse chron type mm -hmm. resume, mm -hmm. but with an adaptation. If you put a section above or the first section called qualifications or career summary, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. an opportunity for you to really take the information from the job description and put it right front and center on the most important real estate on your resume. So the recruiter will quickly see that you're a good match for the role. I, yeah, that's a really good point. Because I remember the, the so it's like the job summary or you know qualify license seasoned clinician seeking whatever. And I always thought that's such a yeah. dumb thing to write because you already know I've you can see that I'm seasoned and I never knew right. what to write. <laughs> so I'm sure right. many Object people are like, an objective what? statement. Yeah, and objective <laughs> statements are way out of fashion on resumes today. Oh, okay, qualifications good. Qualifications well, or a career summary, but don't call it an objective. Yes. <laughs> You can see how long it's been since I've written one. <laughs> now, some people, like I had to do a CV, which is a curriculum vitae. Can you talk us yeah. through like who would need to use a CV and the difference between a resume and a CV? Yeah, a CV is typically used in academia and uh, perhaps mm. in other areas where someone may have uh, published or spoken or, or given posters or keynotes. So a mm. CV is longer in that it's your resume, but it also cites all of your work um, that you've published or that you've spoken or lectures that you've given versus, and it can be many, many pages. A yeah, resume does not have to be on one page unless you're very early on in your career, but I would not go beyond two pages. Interesting. Okay. That's good to know. Cause I remember when I first did my first resume, it was like no more than a page and I didn't really have much anyway. So yeah. it just made sense. So, and then how far back do you go in your resume as far as the chronological aspect of years back? How far do you go? Uh, I would recommend up to 10 years or 10 years back, because if you're okay. offered the position and the company does a background check, background checks usually look back seven to 10 years. And this uh, is a okay. really important tip for older folks that are in or re-entering the marketplace, is that when you list your education, you don't need to put your graduation dates. But oh, when you list your employment, you do need to put your employment date. So starting roughly 10 years ago makes it a nice clean resume and you don't have to go yeah. way, way back. And that's good because some people, for whatever reason, there's this, the ageism aspect of some companies that want to hire certain right. uh, age demographics and they want perhaps other things. So that's great. So at least gets them, 
gets the individuals who may have be more much more seasoned in the career than, than people just coming into yes. it. So that makes a lot that gives on a, on a, a great um, equal playing field, if you will, um, which I think is really important. So once it goes through the, the automated process and then all of a sudden they're in front of the hiring manager, then they can shine um, and see that they still have vigor or whatever <laughs> to right. counteract exactly. the whole ages and components. Which we do. <laughs> of course you do. We do. I'm, I'm a little older than I look. So <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Lots of filters on this thing. I'm just kidding. All right. So let's let's talk about the five different steps that's really cre okay. you created for your target resume because I think it's really important. I've already learned so much. I know everyone listening and watching this have learned as well. So go ahead. Tell us some of those five steps. Wonderful. Well, the first thing is you need a strategy. And the thing about most job seekers is that they'll decide it's time to look for a job or they'll have a layoff and or something unexpected will happen. And then mm -hmm. they'll just hop on the internet, they'll create a resume, they'll write a zillion cover letters and they'll apply randomly to whatever looks interesting. But for most yeah. people who've experienced applying and not hearing back, that strategy doesn't really work. So having a job search strategy where you identify the types of jobs you're interested in, really mm -hmm. by just reading job descriptions on Indeed or on LinkedIn, and then making a target list of companies that you're interested in, using that target mm. list to see if you can network and learn about the opportunities, but don't okay. actually apply for jobs that you're either not a fit for, not really interested in, or you know that you think if they see your resume, they'll create a job for you because that mm. very, very, very infrequently happens. Spend sure. your time and energy networking. <clears throat> One of my favorite quotes is divided waters lose force. And so if we're, mm -hmm. it's what I, how I would apply that to your situation, what you're talking about is yeah. if I'm applying for so many different jobs, all that energy is being given to all multiple locations or multiple right. job opportunities that if I'm not even interested in it, or I'm like, oh, it's a piecemeal it, then that's, that's energy that's taken away from one of these hour and a half um, you know, writing your, your new resume and the, for the template that you just exactly. So I can definitely Focus. see how that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. And if so, you think but, about it, for, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. If you think about it from a corporate perspective, a recruiter reading a resume that just doesn't make any sense why you're even applying that you've applied to a hundred other, other jobs with is going to pique their interest and isn't going to get you into the interview mm. process. Now there's, Whatever level people are coming into a career, they may know of like great organizations like, you know, you had worked for uh, or recruited for many, many um, big organizations. And so those are obvious. But sometimes when people coming out of university or just coming into a new job, they don't even know what's out there. How would you even create, you said to research, how do you even, what's the steps to even research one of these companies that may be a good fit for you? I would start with where you want to live, either your geography oh. where you are or the geography where you want to move. And like now, while many people are looking for remote positions, mm -hmm. unfortunately, only 15% of the positions on LinkedIn are fully remote, and only 10% oh. of college students are finding fully remote positions. So the reality oh, really? is that most jobs are going to be hybrid today. Uh, it, some of them will be full-time in office, but you'll need to live in the geography where your office is. So start with the geography and then um, start doing some internet searches like biotech companies in St. Louis or mm. um, finance companies in San Francisco and start to make a list mm. of the company startups in Atlanta uh, yeah. by what you think you want. Or you can look for things like go to Indeed or go to LinkedIn and search on marketing jobs in Austin or econometrics jobs oh, on oh, USA Jobs. And so you start to find some job descriptions. And then what's wonderful about the job descriptions is that they're going to start to sound alike after a while. And you can mm. use those oh. job descriptions to figure out what do you need to do to be a great candidate. So using the example oh, I, I used before, if there are three job descriptions that you're most interested in all require Google Analytics, then go get Google Analytics certified. Mm. Um, it's a great roadmap to getting the job you want. I really like that. That's very practical. Yeah. One thing I, when I started Lifeology, so I left my practice in 2015 and I came to, mm -hmm. or downsized rather, and I came here to Fort Lauderdale or Florida. And I, that's how I started everything. It was like, I want to, I'm creating a new business. 
And so mine's a little bit different, but I did what you did in the sense of where do I want to live? And so yeah. I was, I said, I want to create my new company in a place where I want to live. I want to be, if I can be remote, I want to be remote, but I want to create it in a place. So I was like, what does that look like? And so I was like, well, I grew up on the water. Um, I love sunlight, like we all do. And I was like, I want something more tropical, which is just a little different. So here I am in Florida. So I did exactly what you said as far as figuring out where you want to live first. And so for me, that creates yeah. a quality of life. Because if you like where you live, you know, obviously there's traffic, et cetera, that's it's different. Yes. But if you like where you live on your downtime, that's really going to invigorate you to be the most successful person you can be. Yes, I completely agree. But recruiters often choose candidates already in their local geography. So I'll give you a mm. tip. Right. On your resume, right under your header with your name and your, you do need your city and state, um, your phone number and your email address. Mm -hmm. If you're living in Chicago and you really want to be in Austin, you can put right beneath, beneath it, open to relocate to Austin or even mm. relocating to Austin in August, 2023. That gives the recruiter some um, idea that you want to be in Austin, that you may even be coming on your own and will oh, make you stand out more than all of the other candidates that may need to be relocated. Oh, I, I like that. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause once again, it's so interesting because you're saying that your education, you don't have to put the year, which if I go back and look at my CV, well, I actually did have to write a CV <laughs> uh, for last month. And so I do have my education that year on there. So I'm going to have to go back and take that off. But that's good to know. I like that as well as, you know, you're even saying what you need to have in the header. It's good. It's really good information because it's, you know, it sounds like some of these things have changed as well. What is the, what's the second step? The second step is network. Um, you've okay. probably heard that 85% of jobs or more are filled through networking. Um, it's not necessarily always cold calling. A lot of companies mm. have employer referral plans and they rely okay. very heavily on those employer referrals because recruiters are so busy and they receive so yeah. many applications for every job that they post. A lot of people I work with are very hesitant to network because they say it feels fake or it feels mm -hmm. inauthentic. Other folks feel uh, introverted or have some social anxiety about networking. And even others feel like, I don't want to bother these people. They're probably very busy. They don't want to talk to me. Um, put that all aside and realize not everyone you reach out to is going to be able to follow up with you, but some of them will. So rejoice in the folks that you do connect with. And maybe some of them will even turn into mentors or folks who can help you find your next job. I like that. You know, it's a lot of times when people think of networking, it's kind of old school. You have to go, you go to an event and you got to pull your, yeah. your business card out, et cetera, which is funny. Yeah. I have like a dot card. I, I, I'm not affiliated with a dot card, but it's kind of cool because it yeah. has a, a QR code on the back of it, but also has, if you just tap it to um, any certain, certain types of phones, it automatically will just import everything as well. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to networking though, is that what are you thinking old school as well? Like old school going to events or, or networking um, via Yes. Um, LinkedIn or other programs like that? Both. So on LinkedIn, there's there are actually some tricks where you can find out who went to your school, for instance, that work at certain oh. companies, or you can search by your school alumni to see who works in engineering, who works in finance. So mm. there are some great tricks on LinkedIn to find people that you have something in common with. Um, and I always recommend buying an upgraded platform on LinkedIn so that you can send okay. in mails, which are like emails oh. on LinkedIn. And you can reach out to someone by in mail on LinkedIn and hopefully connect with them that way rather than having to officially connect where they can reject or accept you. Gotcha. Oh, interesting. As, okay. Yeah. As far as real, you know, kind of old school networking goes, there's lots of opportunities, everything from um, conferences, associations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a, um, a group in Vermont called Vermont Business for Social Responsibility and VBSR puts mm. on some great networking events. So look for opportunities. It doesn't always have to be a job fair or something specifically titled yeah. as networking, but the key to networking, whether you're online or in person, is it's not about finding a job or getting an interview. It's about building a relationship like you and I, when we mm, met, mm -hmm, it's about, mm -hmm. about staying in touch with people and finding ways to help each other re re reciprocally, reciprocally. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I like that. Helping each other out. <laughs> yeah. I really like you saying that because I've been, 
I've been, well, for my show or for other things, when people meet me, they automatically say what they can do for me. Yeah. And I would be like, well, can I get your name first? <laughs> no, yeah. you are. <laughs> and so it's it's interesting. So I, I'm like, I'm glad to hear that you're saying you're creating that relationship aspect of it because right. there, there's nothing worse than trying to sell someone your skills, et cetera, if you haven't even created that emotional joining or just the exactly. camaraderie of some sort. It's really, for me, it's very exactly. off And I maybe you can comment on this, but I've heard that psychologically, the more you allow the other person to speak, mm -hmm. the better they feel about the conversation. So when yes. networking, it's not going in and talking all about yourself. Sometimes it's just asking good questions and listening to the other yes. person and, and asking for advice or asking for information about a company or a job or, you know, an industry and letting them give the advice. Yes, I believe I, I try to remember what it was. I think it's I know in my field when it comes to um medical providers as well as psychological providers. I think if the provider allows the patient to speak for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, it's a 90% mm -hmm. chance that, that that patient will stay with that provider. So yeah. it's, <laughs> it's interesting. If exactly. I just am quiet and allow my patient or my client to talk to me, there we go. I have that connection as well. <laughs> we yeah, only have right. time for one more step. So walk me through the third step. And then I know we'll, people will come to your website to find the other, the other steps as well. Okay, here is my last step. Never ever ask what is the salary early on mm. in an interview process. Interesting. Now, as a recruiter, because I'm still an active recruiter as well as a career coach, and I will reach out to people on LinkedIn and I will tell, send them a job description and ask them, are you interested in this role? And they'll text me back or email me back, what is the salary? I'm immediately mm. going to not consider them. Salary oh, ranges really? are wide. They're very wide. We, first of all, we know salary is important. We're not trying yeah. to gloss over it. But the fact that you, you don't care about the job, the company, the opportunity, the That's role, fine. that you're not interested in learning more first before having that, com that compensation conversation mm -hmm. is a huge turnoff to recruiters. So Interesting. yes, it should come up early. Recruiters will often ask you, what are you looking for as far as compensation, but never lead with, well, what does it pay? It just, you, you'll never get the job when you lead with that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So that's not the leading part. When, when would be an appropriate time to ask that then? You could ask um, really kind of towards the end of the interview, the recruiter often asks, well, what's your required compensation? And I, my advice is give a number, not a range, because a company will try and get you to your number. So if you oh, say okay. $80,000 yeah. a year and, mm -hmm. the, and you're out of the compensation range, the recruiter may tell you, oh, our compensation range only goes up to 70000 Would you still be interested in moving forward with the interview? Oh, then kind okay. of you know where it's at. Sure. Um, yeah. And as far as negotiating an offer, you really want to wait until the end of the process and you have one when the company really wants you and they want to make you happy. It, it's it's a win win if you can make mm. a little more and yeah. they get get you as an employee. So um, always negotiate, but do it uh, as a win win. Do it with positivity mm. um, and do it with authenticity. I appreciate that. That's really good. Because once again, it's it's good to know the process of what to do, it, especially on this your side as a recruiter. Yeah. And so someone like me looking for positions can be a little bit different. So yeah. unfortunately, uh, Sue Shlom, our time is up. <laughs> if my viewers and listeners want to find out more information about you, uh, to learn more about the targeted resume, all your steps, uh, to even have to work with you specifically and how to target yes. the resume, where would they find this information online? You can find information about me and my practice at www thetargetedresume.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for the wonderful guest on my show today. Once again, I know so many people have learned so much information and I'm confident they will reach out to you and you will help them target the resume to find the job that's right for them. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.